OBS settings and importing them and making them good. Um, you know what? I just feel like sitting. Yeah, let's just hit that start streaming right now. Do it. Yeah, do it. Because it's working like a bought one. Oh, and YouTube thinks we're good. Yay! Good, morning. good afternoon. Good evening. Good night. This is the the duo. Daniel Glenn and Daryl is a service finally back together after a few episodes. You did the ninety together or uh, away with me while I was flying back from Johannesburg. Johannesburg. Yep. All did. right, let's hit that intro. You're missing out. No, I don't feel like I'm missing out. You know. Uh, uh, we, we have these sayings, uh, everyone, when um, we, we, yes, we um, do. I don't know, g say the, the various flight checks and, yes, we're yep. ready to go. And I say, yep, we're rolling. And so that Daniel knows that the intro is going and he'll sing rolling, rolling, rolling every time. It's like some... So. Oh, shut up, sorry. Really? Yes, we're what? ready to go. And I say, yeah, Roland. Yeah. <laughs> Um, anyway, Focus. welcome to the show. <laughs> <laughs> um, who have we got here today? Who have we got here today? Well, Roll we have call. Sandy. Sandy. Liz. Liz. Oh, Liz. Haven't seen you for a while. Right. Rainy day in Minnesota. Su Suzanne. Suzanne Hunt. Yes. Right down the street Huey from Land. you? Yeah, right down the street, yeah. I think well. Suzanne's down from Hamilton, so yeah, about an hour and a half away. Yeah, close nice, enough. nice. And I know that Phil said he wanted to be here, but um, he's flying. He's on a plane, yes. Right. What is this? Um, yeah, welcome. We we uh, had a couple of weeks where where I was uh, tripping over in um, uh, South Africa, doing the three six five <clears throat> tour ZA, and um, yeah, some good things to say about that. It was a, a lot of fun, amazing community over there, and a beautiful country. Um, mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. certainly opened my eyes about about um, I guess how how the tech community um, runs grows. Um, mm. and, and everything in between. Um, when I get the chance, I'll, I'll pull some thoughts together and drop it into a blog post. And the exciting thing too is that we filmed a documentary while we we're on the way. It sounds pretty. <laughs> of course um, you did. Exciting. Did, did Adam like film while he was sleeping? Because it appeared he was sleeping all the time. So yeah. Did he, did he just set up a camera and go to sleep? Or yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, he always had a web, uh, um, a GoPro or something to to capture yeah. the action. Um, no, that was just part of the running joke. Was was um, everyone got caught sleeping except me, and then and then I got caught sleeping on the plane ride from Cape Town to Johannesburg. Yes, you did. So, yeah. Yes, you did. Finally got everyone. Anyway, we, we've enough of that. Um, we'll we'll uh, do a bit of a talk sometime and a recap. Mm -hmm. Today is the three six five Music Center show. Yes. Yes. So let's uh, have a look at what's one. what's on. What is yes, on? and I'm loving this first one. Sir, ding, 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 ding. let's get rid of the, the major updates to the starters because they always seem to. Uh, 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 never mind. Yeah, um, I, I uh, like to try and blow up the size of the screen so that we can uh, see it a bit better. But it means that this disappears. Let's go that one there. Huh? How about that, everyone? Can you see it? Can you see me now? We can see you. All right, that's good. <laughs> In, in the in the true fashion of what I usually do, I try and dismiss everything that that is um, not of consequence this week. Yep. Oh my goodness! Look at the the formatting here today, man. I look know, I know. That's because so, you're on the preview or whatever. Oh uh, yeah, maybe. Am I on the right so, one? So yes, this one, the one seven seven eight one two, which is using larger, f more flexible <laughs> images. Um, I. This one, I am really excited More flexible than a Fold yep. phone for the Galaxy. Well, right. Um, have you, I guess you've seen those. <laughs> oh, um, my goodness. <laughs> it's been some, some wonderful stuff. So for this one, um, the current setting is you can only upload a file that is 200 by 30 pixels. Mm. And it has to be less than 10 kilobytes. Yep. Yep. Which is very limiting and really results in a lot of images that are pixelated, you know, cause it's people the take the size their... of a bad bubblegum tattoo. Right. Well, they take the, they take the, you know, image that they have for their company and they go, Oh, I've got to shrink it down to this. And it just, it doesn't look great. Um, 
and so (laughs) yeah right and it has to be a jpeg a png or a gif okay so um it is without a doubt uh something that i think has needed improvement for a while so this is i you know it's such a small thing but for the uh, look and feel of your site. I think it's a, I actually think it's a big thing. Um, so I think hope, hopefully designers will go, yes, our logo won't look like crap anymore. Yeah. I, I think that it, it is important to have some pride in your company logo and, yeah. uh, <laughs> and have it recognizable. Um, you know, that's sort of one Oh one intranet. Um, let's get some pride in what we see. Uh, yeah. Internal marketing rejoice. Our brand looks yes. great again. Um, exactly. Yeah, I just wonder if there's going to be a few more options in, in making that toolbar or nav bar, uh, you know, more customizable. Uh, was there a point there where we were able to actually, this was years ago, but we were able to have our own um, JPEG or something behind it as a banner? I forget. Yes. And it was very short-lived, I think. <laughs> mm. um, but it was, but again, it was it was actually pretty limiting because it had to be, 30 pixels by whatever. Yeah. It was very limiting if you remember. So, um, yes. And, but I think, you know, maybe this is another step, like you said, to giving us more control over that. But mm. for now, this is a great thing. Um, this yep. one, this one update. Yeah. Not, not much more to say about that, but just, uh, uh good to see it. Um, updates come into the authentication behavior in Azure sign in pages. Yes. So th- this is the, and we talked, to, uh, I talked about this um, last week because there was an update in the uh, message center about Dynamics. It's the same message, but it was about Dynamics 365. And this is really basically, they're going to check to see if the account you enter is actually in the domain before they redirect you to the custom sign-in page. So do you have a custom sign-in page for your organization, Daryl? Um. Yeah, I do for Adopt and Embrace and yeah. a partner or two that we work with. I haven't done it on my own MVP page. I think I No, I did. Yeah, yeah. I went to I went to um Office 365 Mecca. Uh I <laughs> call it that. Uh remember the the sign in page from Santa Monica Boulevard? Mhm. Yeah, yep. no, I took my photo there and and replaced that. But that that's about it. That's about it. Right. Um, so, so it's going to check what do you think about domain this change for that. Then? Yeah, um, it, well, it's I... going to change. It's going to check to see if it's an actual account or if mm. it's, um, you know, if someone's just putting in a, a dummy account to try to get to your your custom login page. And it, it makes a note here that this is a, a kind of the first step, or maybe two second or third step to trying to do uh, implement passwordless um, sign in using mm-hmm. Fido. So, you know, Fido is, you know, you have a hardware key and you can uh, sign in that way. Um, So it's, uh, again, I think it's a good thing. I always thought it was kind of weird. I I think it's kind of weird anyway, the whole, the way it redirects and, um, you know, it's just kind of a funny feeling. You have to put in the username and then hit tab and then it takes you. And I've always felt that was kind of an odd experience anyway, but at least, um, I don't know. It feels feels like it. They, it should have been doing this all along. Uh, just doing that initial check, make sure that it's an an account. Mm. Yeah. No. No. It's you know? it's good. Uh, I think that um, pretty early on, organizations found that they couldn't put um, sensitive information on that landing page, even if it was just a a little hint of uh, an internal right. marketing thing or whatever. If people were using that space to to um, advertise or or push a message, right. because just anyone could could get in there if they just drop the the domain name in. But uh, yeah, good to see that that's that's a, a thing. Um, just a further check. Got to look into that Fido thing. Um, sounds interesting. I, I almost bought one uh, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, uh, I probably will buy one. Uh, I've been looking at them for a while. It's just I haven't had a a real need for it yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I mean, I think it because so many things don't support it fully yet. Yeah. But um, I, I actually priced one out last week, I think it was. What are they so, worth? Um, the one I was looking at was 45 US. Okay. Um, and because it gave, it worked with um, password managers. Mm-hmm. 
So if you have LastPass or like One Password or yep. you know any of those password managers, um, that one particular works with those. You uh-huh. can get a cheaper one. I think it's twenty twenty five US. Um, that doesn't, right? Mm. But then you're kind of like, well, I, I would I use a password manager, so eventually I'm, I would be kind of stuck in in that land of oh, I wish I had this. So yeah. that forty five. I think is and and is it just that you use the FIDO key to access it? You don't have to press anything else. It's just a physical key to to sign in. Right. They have. Uh, you still press it, I believe, to okay. make it go. You have to mm-hmm. like actually press it the, the USB key. All right. Uh, there's All some right. of them that you don't that are like no show USB. You know, it just kind of sticks in. So mm-hmm. anyway, I. I just started looking into it. I haven't looked. Have, I don't know all the particulars for the hardware, but mm. and how it works. I'm using um, I'm using MFA through the Microsoft Authenticator, and all I get is a prompt to say, "Are these the numbers that are displayed on the screen?" So yeah. that's that's quite useful. But I do find sometimes there's a delay, mm-hmm. and I have to go into the app and make sure well, that it's time delay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I've actually noticed in the past three weeks or so that. A lot of my Microsoft Are these the numbers that were on your screen three weeks ago? <laughs> well, no. In the last three weeks, like I have it to text me, oh. and it doesn't text me the first time. I have to click the link that says sign in a different way, and yeah. then I have to click text again, and oh, then yeah. it'll send me the code. And okay. that's not how it's supposed to work. But I've noticed that over the past three weeks or so that um, almost – and this is not just my tenant. This is other tenants as well. Uh, yeah. In the U.S., it's not functioning exactly right. So – Mm. Anyway, yeah, I'll, I'll go we for digress. that push. I'll go for that push notification. Yeah. Well, that's nice. Thank you, Logitech. I have updates <clears> available. <throat> Sorry about that. Um, as as part of uh, uh, the show, we thought we'd um, give you some of those additional um, pop ups just to to let you know that Daryl's using a Logitech keyboard. Daryl, um, we need busy signals. I know. Um, I know. No, it's actually part of all these things that that you go through when you oh, optimize your no. PC. Thank you, Run Support Assist. Um, nice. from Dell uh, <laughs> and this episode is brought to you today by Logitech and Dell mm. oh, no. are um, they actually going to no, pay us? yeah maybe no I set up a local account we'll get to that when I when we get yep. to the um, uh, the soapbox section <laughs> next message um, next message a fancy fancy new feature busy on so this busy is... in Microsoft Teams can I say something about it? <laughs> yeah uh, it probably is going to be the same thing I was going to say so go ahead yeah 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 busy on Busy on busy? No. Um, I, I really had to read this a, a few times to understand. And, and yeah. can uh, let me see if I can explain it in regular people's terms. When we call someone and that someone is on the phone, mm-hmm. we get a signal to say beep, beep, or whatever it sounds like in your country. Sometimes there's a bit of variation to say that person is on a call Sometimes right now. Uh, mm-hmm. Maybe try again later. Mm-hmm. Um, there, there, there wasn't that in place beforehand. And right. now there is when you call someone on Microsoft Teams or some org that's using Microsoft Teams for their their um, phone system, mm-hmm. and um, right. if they're busy, then then you'll get a busy signal. What did you get it, beforehand? I, I think it just rang. <laughs> okay, okay, rang and rang and, and rang, or went through the yeah. voicemail probably. So one thing that I want to point out is um, you have to turn this on. It's off by default. So uh, it has to be turned on for your tenant, um, right. and when it when it rolls out, and you'll get either you can set it up for a busy signal or in a message to say something like this person is busy, you're on a call or in a meeting. Really? Oh, that's nice. Yep. You can customize it. Uh, it <laughs> says or an appropriate message. I'm not sure if we can customize it. If you click on the um, see more information. Yeah. you will uh, see that you really don't get more information. This is another... Um, Teams calling so, policies. A placeholder. Uh, there's, there's a busy on busy is at the very, very bottom. All right. Let's um, have a look. It's a new setting, and it's mm-hmm. a paragraph that basically um, tells you what we know now. So it's handled... Um, it's new or incoming calls can be rejected with a busy signal, Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's a user level or a tenant level, which is kind of cool. So we have a little bit of management there of where we set it. Hmm. I don't know. It's a it's an expectation to have that kind of signal there anyway. Um, right. 
<laughs> well, hang on. No, let, let's think about that. Like, uh, I can't remember the last time I heard a busy signal. Most of the time it'll go through and then go, oh, but, voicemail. Well, most, most of the time when you hear a busy signal, it's only if you're dialing the person and they're dialing. Right? It, like, if I'm calling you and it's ringing mm. mm-hmm. and someone else calls me at the exact same time, they're going to get a busy signal. Hmm. But with this age with cell phones, you know, when you're on a call mm. uh, and we may be this may be something that, you know, some of the younger viewers of this show may not even understand. <laughs> There's this time <laughs> right, right, when, <laughs> when there was no such thing as voicemail. Yeah, I know. I know. It sounds weird. Uh, some of us had little machines that we'd hook up to the phone line. And if we didn't answer, it would record a message. Play a tape, tape two tapes, because there was a re- there was a recording tape, yep. uh, like your voice message, and then the the yep. actual recording. Mm. That's right. <clears throat> so uh, we had a little box called uh, an answer machine, but if you were on the phone and someone called you, they would just get a busy signal. I know it's weird. That's not even as as weird as it gets because it used to ring and everyone on your block would their phones would ring. So mm-hmm. let's not go there. I'm not that old. Uh, a party lines. I know, yes, <laughs> I know it used to happen. Uh, but anyway, the uh, so this I think you're right. There's an expectation that something happens when someone calls and you're busy. Now we're focusing on calls, but this is also for meetings. So. Um, I think this is a really good thing. If I'm on a meeting, I definitely don't want my phone ringing in Teams. Mm-hmm. Now, will it? Um, what happens now? I don't know because I'm trying to think Look, what I happens think it, now. I think it really just it goes just, to voicemail. That's yeah. I think it maybe know. so. You know what? Why what, uh, busy signal? Beep beep. Yeah, I'm on a meeting. Beep beep. I'm on a call. Or you have reached the voicemail box of blah yeah. blah blah. Please leave a message. I think that's. That's more useful. What do you reckon? I I do. Mm. Just it, go to although voicemail. I don't really listen to voicemail much either. I don't either. Because I mean, you know, if you don't reach someone, it's it's usually ah, okay. It's going to voicemail. I'm going to send them an IM. I'm going to right. try again later. That's right. Mm. Well, and I get that all the time. People call me and then fuss at me. I called you. Did you? Uh, did you leave a voicemail? No. <laughs> did you text me? No. Did you email me? No. Well, mm. then I'm not going to call you back. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the day we live in. I mean, we used to, it's really weird because we used to, then came along these things called, there are a little box about yay big called caller ID. <gasps> and you could hook those up to your separate phone. Box. Yes. A separate box. And it would show calls that came in while you were gone. And at first it was just a number. And then it, then you could pay extra and get the person's name mm. on the box. Contact um, list. Right. And so you come in and you go through that. Who called me? And you would call them back because they called you. Mm. Now we don't do that, right? You get a call and you're like, eh, if it's important, they'll call back. <laughs> <laughs> or they'll text me or they'll they'll email me or, or whatever. I'm not answering that one because I don't feel like that conversation right now. <laughs> right. Well, or for me, a lot of times, I'll just be honest, I'm working and someone calls me. Yeah. I don't, you know, it is not. I equate it to this. You're on the interstate. You're on the what do you call what do you call interstates? Big highway. Just highways. the motorway. So, yeah. Motorway. And you're in a lane. There's a car in front of you, but there's maybe car, two car distance or what maybe you know, and the car next to you has their blinker on to get in your lane. Are you obligated to let them in just because they turned on their blinker? Their signal? Nope. Uh... I'm sorry. If we're driving along and mm. you're like, you put on your signal and you start to get over, not my problem. I mean, it is my problem if you're going to hit me, but I am not obligated to hit my brakes and slow down so much so that you can get over. That's not my problem. Mm. Not my problem. So I equate this kind of deal. I'm working. I'm getting stuff done. Someone calls me. If I don't know the number, not my problem. I you know, if this is an emergency, oh, yeah. you'll call back, you'll yeah. whatever, you'll leave a voicemail. I'm not answering. Not my problem. Mm. My problem is what I'm doing right now. Um, mm. You know, if it's family or friends, whatever, different. But again, uh, not my problem. So, you know, what would be, uh, be really useful is if if this was a new number, a new contact, someone that is not on your list. Of course, it's not going to yeah. come up. It's going to be just a number. 
But wouldn't it be great if you could preempt and say, here's a here's a very short message to say an introduction about who it is. Yeah. As you're calling Well, it. isn't there such a thing? Um, there used <laughs> to be a, such a thing, wasn't there, where you could require someone that didn't you, you wasn't a contact you could require them to say their name and then it would screen them oh i used to have that feature i don't have any more but i used to have that feature i don't remember anyway wow yeah, yeah. Very tell me about it and and Sorry. it's even to the point where sandy's saying is this the soapbox segment yeah, yeah, no, come this on is now, not guys let's keep moving on sorry busy on busy not my problem you got it yeah that's right and if you didn't get them, not your problem. Hey, um, now Office 365 <laughs> Group card enhancements. Cards. All right. Cards, contact cards. cards. You hover over cards. 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 The Office 365 Group cards enhan- enhancements? No. Um, when you no. hover over a contact card, it pops up. It gives you a bit of information. We've got one of those for Office 365 Groups. It looks like we're going to be able to do something with them functionally and uh, in, in managing and checking membership. Well, and more than that, it's checking membership, but it's also approving uh, owners can improve pending members Hmm. in that expanded view of the hover card, uh, renew groups. You know, if you have uh, groups that um, you you have set up for renewals. So this is really good in that. And it makes a note here. There's no additional functionality. This is not new functionality in that you've always had those tasks, but it's new functionality bringing it to the hover card. So you don't have to leave that page. Mm. Yeah, uh, I just I wonder about this. I mean, it's it's convenient if you remember yep. that it's there. Yeah, you know, you're sort right. of wandering through your Office 365 groups and you hover yep. over something in a, I don't know, in a team or an Outlook, and oh, that's right. I I remember seeing there was a, an email sure. there to say that there's a new membership request. There was something else like just like that recently that I I went wait a minute what is this. And I went back yeah. and looked, and it, that feature had been there for a long time. But it, you know, it's not the way I'm used to doing it. Nor yeah. did I even, you know, remember it was there. You would so. get an email to say this person has requested um, membership. Mm-hmm. We get a notification in the app, like in Teams, right. and you would trigger it from there. You wouldn't go, right. look, there's a little, uh, a little notification, a counter there to say that 50 people have asked to join my private group. Uh, right. I might just trigger that off from from a contact card. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> maybe. Um, maybe yeah it's just it's another another way to do it but uh, mm-hmm. I don't know how, know how important this is I think let's let's keep moving yep let's keep moving uh, sh- oh this is good sharing links that, that block downloads for office files what, is this the thing Daryl? I think so I think I mean, that a... okay. I, the, I've always wondered that when you go and share something and you're only giving people view access they still have the ability to download this document. Um, I would think that if I'm giving you view access, I'd want you to view it, but not take it for yourself. Yep. And make it your own. <laughs> yeah, I think the only – I look at this and go, it's not a thing. Now, if I had to choose between it's a thing and it's not a thing, and the definition of it's a thing is kind of it murky here. It bothers but, you or doesn't bother you. Hmm. Well, it just – it, it's kind of similar to when you save a document as a PDF and send it to someone because you don't mm-hmm. want them to, you know, grab the content and, you know, say, oh, look, I've got. But we all know if you send them the content, they have it. They can use it as much as they want. You send me a document that I can't download. Fine. But um, I've got a phone. Yeah, I can just record it, take pictures. I've got software. I've got T- Camtasia, you know, snap, uh, snag it or what. I mean, I can grab the information if I want it mm-hmm. and copy and pay. I mean, I just I think it's great for this kind of yes, g- but I don't want it to give people warm and fuzzy feelings that they're being secure. That's all. I don't I don't want you to feel like this is a security feature. Yeah, because it's not. You put in a you put in a road bump in there to signal to the recipient. Hey, I really don't want you to take this and use it for yourself. I want you to read it, review it, um, but right. I don't really want you to. Which may be, annoy the crap out of people, you know. Be 007. For some go, people. I'm taking a picture. Yeah, I maybe. Mean, I, you know, it's not a security feature um, because I can easily get around it. So mm. um, just just know that. That's all I'm saying. I, so yep. that's why I say it's not a thing. 
Yeah. Uh, just because it, it's, I just I feel like a lot of people are going to get warm and fuzzy feelings about this. Of oh, I'm being secure. You can't steal my content. Mm. Sorry. It's yeah. It's just a it's just a signal really to say um, I really don't want you to to, to download it. <clears throat> I mean, if you're really right. serious, you'll implement something like Azure Information Protection and sure. prevent people exactly. from um, this, copying and pasting content from yep. it. This could also be a preventative measure for making sure you own the version. Right. Mm. I'm sharing this with you. I don't want you to create a bunch of versions all over the place. This is the version. So don't download it and save it somewhere. Mm. I mean, and if you're using it for that, great. I think that's that's really what this is should be used for. Mm. Mm, okay. Um, and that is uh, going to be rolling out mid-May, so just around yep. the corner, really, to standard organizations. That's right. Organizations on standard release. Standard um, release. Standard organizations. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, but it'll be... It'll be, it looks like it'll be another option. Now, I guess this is the other curly part to it. Mm. You go to share something and, and it's yet another tick box or another another choice to make yes. while you are sharing. Um, that's something that um, you should let your people know that mm-hmm. the option's going to be there and what to do with it. And update your screenshots <laughs> for all your training. <laughs> yeah. Um, but this is, they're making this available for File Explorer, Office apps, the rest of Office. So, um, just know that, I mean, this is coming everywhere that you can do that sharing. Yep. Good. Yep. It is uh, good. Group connected team site homepage. I must admit, I got about as far as the previous message in my preparation. <laughs> um, but I just, I get kind of excited even seeing words like group connected and team site. Yeah, this is, should I so be? when, when when you first created team sites that yep. were group connected, you know, for the past two and a half years, whatever it is, um, you would get a SharePoint site that had two web parts, basically, right? News and activity, and that was mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. So what they're saying is, well, from now on, when you create one, you're going to get news, activity, quick links, and documents all ah. on the home page. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Great. The second part of this, though, is they're going to go back and retroactively add quick links and documents to those Ooh. group connected sites okay. that were created with only news and activity, mm. but only if you have not edited the home page. Oh, OK. Well, that's a good that's a good decision point, uh, because if you have gone and edited it, you, you probably right. don't want extra stuff being added and shuffling your, your web parts around. I hope that it works. That's, <laughs> that's you mean that decision uh, point? <laughs> yes, I hope that it. I hope that when they roll it out, it goes. It does act, actually see that there's been changes because this could really, you know, mess people up when they go. Wait yeah. a minute, what is this new stuff, and why are my web parts all over? The, you know, weird. So uh, anyway, if it works mm. the way it's described, and I, we have no reason to doubt it, uh, uh, I think it's a good thing. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, Hey man, how many messages have we got left? One more. Well, one more. This one. This Since one. We've talked about this. Triple that Skype for Business is re- yeah retiring 3D ES. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. Um, but you know we're moving to Teams, and uh, for those who are still on Skype for Business, this is kind of important. I mean, it's a, it is important. You need to be paying attention to this. But we've talked about it at least twice about um mm. uh, about the the certificates and stuff changing and got for business required by 10th of july mm-hmm. i'm sure we'll see another right. message uh, approaching that date that's right um right uh soapbox time oh no hang on what are these two things oh we just got one in no wait well, i don't have this, that clutter or that reminder this one a, is a big deal changes um, to definition of file shares changes to definition of files shared internally Yes. So the there's um, what do you call the the numbers? The telemetry oh, yeah. has been showing that it's not been working. The numbers have not been reflected as to um, really to represent uh, the counts for items shared. So mm. what they're saying is they're updating that, um, but they're giving clarification as to what it means. And the if you'll pause right there, this that sentence right there that says. After the update, files shared internally is the number of files that you've shared with users within your organizations or with users within groups. And remember, that that may include external users. I just wanted to call mm-hmm. that out. 
Um, they're clarifying that for us. So it's not just internal, right? If you share it with a group and that group has external people, then you're sharing it with them as well. Yeah, they um, viewed it. Yep. So it, just updating that number, giving clarity. Uh, and, and I think that's, you know, good stuff. Accurate. But it's not a change or anything. It's just yep. trying to be accurate. That's right. More accurate. Okay. Yep. And that last one reminding that, that clutter is, is going to be retired. And uh, it is. 31st of January, if you're still using that and you're not using Focused Inbox, I, I don't know why. <laughs> I mean, oh. Focused Inbox is, is a lot better, but... Um, you know, it came out with a, a quite a rush. Boom! Here it is. There's the feature. Um, yep. It was turned on by default, and some organisations got used to using it and mm-hmm. using a separate folder instead of a view in right. their inbox. They had a clutter folder. Um, yep. So just uh, make plans to to tidy that up eventually by 2020. Um, yeah. Uh, now we're done. Now we're done. Yes. Soapbox. We are. Um, well, I, I've. Um, I've been uh, having ongoing trouble. Let me put this into a more intimate uh, uh, video face of you and I instead of seeing messages. Now we're talking. Intimate. Yes, Ooh. Daniel. Daniel, look at me. Look, look at me. Look at me. Do you have problems sometimes with uh, uh, connected accounts in Office? Um, you are a consultant. You sign into various different environments. You sometimes need mm-hmm. to authenticate against your customers' environments and create documents. Um, mm. You probably have a domain joined computer, Windows 10. Yep. And mm-hmm. and so it's going to prefer your workplace. Um, do, does Office get mixed up for you sometimes and fail to connect to tenants and stuff like that? I. So first of all, I think the short answer is yes. Uh, but I will say several times uh, to Office 365 and Office because it's lost it. Um, in, in fact, on Friday, I had, office crashed three different times because I was trying to open a document from mm. OneDrive for business and it just, yep. it was not having any of it. Yep. No, I, um, <clears throat> I'm experiencing this across office, across OneNote in particular, one of my favorite apps. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. and this is partly why we're, st- we're getting all these pop-ups and everything everywhere. Cause I, um, have gone through a, a process of, was signing into this machine with a domain, uh, Azure AD domain joined um, mm-hmm. authentication, right? So sign in as Daryl at Adopt and Embrace. But I found that, that that was overriding other things that I wanted to try and authenticate with, and it would add connected accounts every time I was trying to connect to a, mm. um, a customer's environment. Now, a connected account is when you're signed into Office and you go to access a, a different uh, document from a different tenant and mm-hmm. it will add it as one of the 10 possible other yep. environments that you're allowed to connect to and authenticate against. It's called a connected account. You'll see it in the, um, mm-hmm. in the backstage view. Um, that was getting confusing. So I, I started to uh, create separate accounts in, in um, Office. You know where you can go and say switch account and sign yep. up? And, right. Um, <laughs> yeah. I've had no luck with that. No, at well, all. I mean, that's in the this only scenario way that I can I do not. this. Um, yeah. I, I then decided, right, I'm going to create a, I'm going to shift all of my my settings. I was going to say some other word, um, and and create a new account profile under Microsoft account, thinking mm-hmm. that's going to be still giving me the ability to sign in using a cloud based identity. Um, but it's not going to override anything. Now, what happens there is the Microsoft account overrides and says, "I'm the I'm the priority. Thanks very much. You're mm-hmm. signing into Windows 10. Surely, surely you want to use Office with this account, right? Um, no. Uh, final straw. That's it. I'm going to create a local account. I'm not going to authenticate to anything except the, the local machine. Yeah. And that's where I'm at right now. Is just going to test that and see is this going to mean that I can just happily choose what I want to work on. And Office not get confused with uh, with what it's trying to sign into. Yeah, um, and and let, throw in a, another wrinkle into that, Daryl, is yep. this whole you know when you get that prompt when you log in, it says something to the effect of, and it has a checkbox. Do you you're going to allow this organization to be manage your machine? Mm. No. Wait, what? <laughs> so, <No. laughs> so it's I'm like, wait a minute, no. And so I uncheck the box, but then there's a, on the bottom left, there's a link that says only for this app. 
and an okay. And I, I don't know. It's very, con- it's kind of confusing mm. with this whole sign-in experience. And for me, knowing kind of what's going on with the technology, I, me being confused, I would, you know, others who are yeah. getting this, having, what are they going through, right? Yeah. To what what I it. object to is um, the, the statement that, ah, oh, you're a special case because you're a consultant. Um, yeah. Look, 90, 90% of the world are only going to be signing into one tenant's They've only got one workplace. It's not going to be an issue to them. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, um, but yeah. see, that's not the case. You know, you, you buy Office 365 Home, right? So you can log in using that. And then you log in using your work account, you know, on your personal machine even. Uh, it, it, I mean, just it gets confusing right away. So I don't necessarily agree with that, uh, yeah. that it's, you know, a special case. Yep, yep. So I also find that that tick box uh, interesting, or even that prompt, because it's it's saying in like in, in layman's terms, I'm signing into this this organization which isn't my own, and it's asking permission to manage my machine and maybe add some policies to it to check that I'm using a certain level of security, and uh, and you're going to be part of my <clears throat> my managed policy, mm-hmm. and of course we don't want to do that because this is a work machine. We only want to belong to to our own uh, work policy and not apply right. another policy across a different domain. Um, yeah. So um, you're going to have to keep is, us updated on your progress. I will, with and I'll keep you updated on on the on the OneNote thing too, um, because you know I've been a long time fan and and uh, similar thing authentication problems, notebooks that that stop syncing that were yeah. working in offline mode um, across iOS across Windows 10 OneNote. It's just ah. Anyway, yep. yes. Um, it's not all happy faces, is it? <clears throat> nope. Well, so uh, last thing we'll mention, uh, I'm going to be at SharePoint Fest, uh, Washington, D.C. next week. So uh, be watching for an update on the show for next week. But um, if you're in Washington, D.C. or and you're going to be part of SharePoint Fest, please come say hi. I'm, I'm doing three shows and um sarah Hazi and i am gonna we're gonna be live recording another episode of the coffee chat of 365 hey. adoption where we are going to be answering everyone's questions so make sure you everyone's go to everyone's questions everyone's questions including if you fill out the form right now go dot re365 dot show slash coffee chat q for question coffee chat q then um you can fill out the form and that url is at the bottom of the latest episode as well that we published on the Regarding 365 YouTube channel. So please throw in your questions there, but we'll be recording an episode live there. So please come on out and say hi to me if you're there. Nice one. And a, and a, a final observation for me, um, Stephen Colley has uh, started a, a new playlist on uh, the Regarding 365 YouTube channel, really churning out the episodes. It's called forward slash what's new for Microsoft Teams. Cool. Um, really nice bite-sized, well-explained um, episodes. Um, so mm. enjoy those. And uh, yeah. yeah, good stuff, Steve. It's uh, it's good to see that content coming through. Uh, yeah, look, we'll see you around. Thanks for, for tuning in and for, for hanging in there for oh, 40 minutes. Wow. Uh, yeah, we went over a little bit. Someone got on a soapbox. <laughs> okay, well, thank you, Sandy, Dean, Liz. Um, who else have we still got in there? Uh, some dude called Daniel. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and and everyone else that that tuned in, and we'll tune in a bit later. Yeah, thank Susan you. Hunt too. Thank you. And that was our people today. This is Daryl and Daniel tonight. Goodbye.